I'm Michelle Mikes, the K-12 Mathematics Supervisor for the Cobb County School District. Our district is committed to helping students succeed, and you as parents are an integral part of this process. To help keep you informed about what your child is learning in our math classrooms, we are excited to provide you with these informational videos on concepts taught throughout the school year. Thank you for taking the time to discover ways to support your students' learning. Welcome to the fifth grade Unit 1 Order of Operations and Whole Numbers video. My name is Miranda Westbrook, K-5 Professional Learning Specialist for the Cobb County School District. In Unit 1, students use and evaluate expressions using symbols, write and explain numerical expressions, determine the value of a digit in relation to numbers to the left and right, explain powers of 10, fluently multiply multi-digit whole numbers, and fluently divide four-digit whole numbers by two-digit whole numbers. In the first part of the video, we'll look at standard OA1. Use parentheses, brackets, or braces in numerical expressions and evaluate expressions with these symbols. Standard OA1 calls for students to evaluate expressions with parentheses, brackets, or braces. In upper levels of mathematics, evaluate means to substitute for a variable and evaluate the expression. However, at this level, students are to only evaluate the expressions because there are no variables. This standard builds on the expectations of third grade when students are expected to start learning the conventional order. At the fifth grade level, students evaluate expressions by computing the numbers located within grouping symbols, computing multiplication and division from left to right in the order they appear in the expression, and computing addition and subtraction from left to right in the order they appear in the expression. Students begin the year evaluating expressions with whole numbers. Students apply their knowledge of order of operations with computation of fractions and decimals in later units. Let's look at some examples of expressions that students might simplify. The first example we will look at is 26 plus 18 divided by 4. Following the order of operations, we start by computing 26 plus 18 since it is grouped together by parentheses. 26 plus 18 equals 44. Now we divide 44 divided by 4, which equals 11. Let's look at another example. What about 16 plus 14? divided by 2 times 5. We start by computing 16 plus 14 and 2 times 5 since they are grouped together. 16 plus 14 equals 30 and 2 times 5 equals 10. 30 divided by 10 gives a quotient of 3. Let's look at one more example. 3 plus 15 divided by 5 times 6 minus 2. In this problem, there are no grouping symbols, so we begin by completing multiplication and division operations in the order they appear in the problem from left to right. We start with division, since it occurs first in the order from left to right in the expression. 15 divided by 5 equals 3. Next, we need to multiply. 3 times 6 equals 18. In the final step, we need to add and subtract in the order they occur in the expression. 3 plus 18 equals 21, and 21 minus 2 equals 19. In the next segment of the video, we'll look at standard OA2, write and explain numerical expressions without evaluating them. Standard OA2 calls for students to verbally describe the relationship between expressions without actually calculating them. This standard calls for students to apply their reasoning of the four operations as well as place value while describing the relationship between numbers. This standard does not include the use of variables, only numbers and signs for operations. Let's look at some examples. Write an expression for double five and then add 26. Double five is best written as two times five. Then we need to add 26. So the expression can be written as two times five plus 26. What about this problem? Write an expression for five times greater than 10 times 10. This problem is asking us to write an expression that is five times greater than 10 times 10. 
We can write this problem as 5 times 10 times 10. Students should understand that a number or coefficient located outside of the parentheses means to multiply by the amount located inside the grouping symbols. In this case, 5 times 10 times 10 represents an expression that is 5 times greater than 10 times 10, meaning there are 5 groups of 10 times 10. In the next segment of the video, we'll look at standard NBT1. Determine the value of a digit in relation to numbers to the left and right. This standard calls for students to reason about place value and the magnitude of numbers. It builds from students' fourth grade knowledge of place value where they determine that a digit in one place represents 10 times as much as it represents in the place to its right. In fifth grade, students expand on this concept by recognizing that a digit in one place is one-tenth the value of what it represents in the place to the left. In this example, the one in the hundreds place is one-tenth the value of the one in the thousands place. We can represent this with an equation by writing 1,000 times one-tenth equals 100, which is the same as 1,000 divided by 10 equals 100. In Unit 1, students investigate this concept with whole numbers only. This concept is revisited in Unit 3 when students apply their knowledge of decimal numbers. Let's look at another example. In the number 555,555, how many times greater is the 5 in the thousands place than the 5 in the tens place? Since each place value position to the left is 10 times greater than the place value position to the right, the value of the 5 in the thousands place is 100 times greater than the value of the 5 in the tens place. With an equation, we can show this as 50 times 10 times 10 equals 5,000, which is the same as 50 times 100 equals 5,000. Now let's think about the value of the 5 in the tens position in relationship to the 5 in the thousands position. Each place value position is one-tenth the value of the place value position to its left. So the value of the 5 in the tens place is one one-hundredth the value of the 5 in the thousands place. With an equation, we can show this as 5,000 times one-tenth times one-tenth or 5,000 times one one-hundredth, which is the same as 5,000 divided by 10 divided by 10 or 5,000 divided by 100, all of these are equal to 50. In the next segment of the video, we'll look at standard NBT2. Explain patterns in the number of zeros of the product when multiplying a number by powers of 10 using whole number exponents. In Unit 1, students investigate this concept with whole numbers only. This standard is revisited in Unit 3 where students apply the concept to decimal notation. Standard NBT2 calls for students to multiply by multiples of 10 and powers of 10. For example, students learn that 10 squared is the same as 10 times 10, which equals 100. In another example, 10 cubed is the same as 10 times 10 times 10, which equals 1,000. Students should have experiences working with connecting the pattern of the number of zeros in the product when multiplying by powers of 10 as it is a shift in the digits. Let's consider this problem. 25 times 10 to the fourth power. Students should reason that the exponent indicates that we are multiplying or making the number 25 10 times greater four times. Using this understanding, students notice that the digits are shifting four place value positions to the left. Therefore, 25 times 10 to the fourth equals 250,000. Students can also relate this knowledge to dividing by powers of 10. Let's consider this example, 35,000 divided by 10 squared. In this example, the exponent indicates that we are dividing or making the number 35,000 one-tenth its value two times. Using this understanding, students observe that the digits are shifting two place value positions to the right. So 35,000 divided by 10 squared equals 350. In the next segment of the video, we'll look at standard MBT5, fluently multiply multi-digit whole numbers using the standard algorithm up to a three-digit by two-digit factor. This standard builds upon students' work with multiplying numbers in third and fourth grades. 
In fourth grade, students developed understanding of multiplication through various strategies. Fifth grade is the first grade level in which students are expected to be proficient at using the standard algorithm to multiply. Let's take a look at the problem 481 times 23. Although students are using the standard algorithm, it is important to reinforce concepts of place value. For example, the 2 in the tens position has a value of 20, so it should be referred to as 20 instead of 2. Let's take a look at this problem. 481 times 23. 3 times 1 equals 3. 3 times 80 equals 240. Regroup the 200s. 3 times 400 equals 1200 plus the regrouped 200s equals 1400. Regroup the 10 hundred or 1000. 3 times 0 equals 0 plus the regrouped 1000 equals 1000. Now let's move to the tens position. 20 times 1 equals 20. 20 times 80 equals 1600. Regroup the 10 hundreds or 1000. 20 times 400 equals 8,000 plus the regrouped 1,000 equals 9,000. And now we add the partial products. 3 plus 0 equals 3. 40 plus 20 equals 60. 400 plus 600 equals 10 hundreds. Regroup the 10 hundred or 1,000. 9,000 plus 1,000 plus 1,000 equals 11,000. Regroup the 10,000 and 10,000 plus zero equals 10,000 for a total product of 11,063. In the final segment of the video, we'll investigate standard NBT6, fluently divide up to four digit dividends and two digit divisors by using strategies based on place value, the properties of operations, and the relationship between multiplication and division. This standard builds from student experiences in fourth grade where they were limited to dividing by one digit divisors. It is important to note that the standard division algorithm is not introduced until sixth grade. Let's start by looking at the problem 1050 divided by 25. One strategy a student might use to solve this problem is an area model. With an area model, the divisor is located on the left, the dividend is the rectangular area model, and the quotient is displayed across the top. The dimensions of the area model are determined by the divisor and quotient. In this problem, our divisor is 25. We can represent this using base 10 models of two tens and five ones. Our area model has a value of 1050, and we need to figure out how many groups of 25 are in 1050. To do this, we are going to use base 10 blocks to partition 1050 into 25 groups. We can see that each group contains 42 blocks. So the quotient of 1,050 divided by 25 is 42. Another strategy that students might use to solve division problems is partial quotients. Let's consider the problem 1,716 divided by 16. We need to find how many 16s are in 1,716. An easy number to start with is 100. There are 100 16s in 1,716 since 100 times 16 equals 1,600. Now we are left with 116. We need to find how many 16s are in 116. 10 groups of 16 is 160, but that's too large. Half of 10 is 5. 5 groups of 16 is 80. Now we are left with 36. I know that two groups of 16 is 32. That leaves us with four left over. Our partial quotients are 100, 5, and 2. 
when we add the partial quotients together, we get a total quotient of 107. So 1,716 divided by 16 equals 107 with a remainder of 4. In this unit, students use and evaluate expressions using symbols, write and explain numerical expressions, determine the value of a digit in relation to numbers to the left and right, explain powers of 10, fluently multiply with multi-digit whole numbers, and fluently divide four-digit whole numbers by two-digit whole numbers. Thank you for your time. We know that when families and schools work together, student success increases. Please visit the Cobb County Math Department website for additional information and resources to support your student at home.